Next up, we have a virtual cohort, Monterica Sade Neal. Pause for tack. Hi, Monterica. You're up. Hi. For a description, I am a dark skinned black person with locks half up, half down, and I'm wearing a white and blue striped t shirt dress. I'm gonna read a little bit from an essay I wrote called You're My Sister, published in, wow, I just blanked on that. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. So, in the seventh grade, my best friend Jade and I watched pornos at her father's while he and her stepmother were sleeping. I don't think we ever called it porno, though. We watched flicks. Growing up in Memphis, Tennessee, that's what we'd heard. Flicks. Heard it mostly from older boys and men who didn't care or didn't know we were listening. Or older boys and men who wanted us to be. By the time we were in high school, we went from watching flicks on DVD at her father's after nightfall to watching porno on the internet at her mother's during the daytime. We sat in front of the e-machine's desktop in the guest bedroom. Her mother, Miss Josephine, affectionately deemed the guest bedroom mine because I slept there nearly every weekend after Jade and I met in Mrs. Bennett's class. We were inseparable. Online, Jade chose what we watched. One day while trying to decide, she scrolled and scrolled until she stopped. In between two videos was an ad. It featured a nearly naked, light-skinned Black woman with a long ponytail and asked if we wanted to connect with local ebony sluts. The woman wore a Black halter top, neon pink fence net leggings, and nothing else. She was making her ass clap. The ad looped, played over and over again. We watched it a few times before Jade said, I ain't gay or nothing like that, but... This do be feeling good to watch sometimes. We done this before, sort of. The summer after seventh grade, my mother lived with one of her boyfriends near the Jackson Corn Beef House in Smoky City, one of Memphis's first black neighborhoods. Mama was pregnant with her seventh child. I only visited twice. The first time I went, Jade went with me. We drove ourselves wild trying to find something to do. In the bathroom, Jade found mama's tampons, filled the bathtub with water, kneeled and threw a bunch of them in. Our eyes fell against, our eyes bulged. She fell against the tub and I fell against the wall. Our laughter exploded at how quickly tampons expanded and floated. They nearly terrified us. Eventually we found ourselves rummaging through every drawer in the guest bedroom looking for I don't even know what, until we stumbled upon a box of Polaroids. What we found felt like treasure. Coochie. There was a completely naked or nearly naked black woman in every picture, and they were all dated in the late 1980s. Jade held them gently and in silence. When she gave them to me, I was gentle too. We spread the Polaroids across the bed and studied each one with careful eyes. Poses varied. Some of the women sat on a floral couch with their legs open, two fingers parting the lips of their coochies. Others wore thongs and posed with their asses to the camera, bent over, hard nipples, slender hips. A few of them wore red lipstick and big hoop earrings, hair finger waved or ponytailed, feet bare or in high heels. One wore a pair of white high top Reeboks though, and her expression wasn't sexy or fierce. She was smiling. In fact, she was laughing. Jade's jaw dropped and her eyes bulged a little. I know she ain't got no damn Reeboks though. Girl, what the hell? She laughed. I didn't respond, but I thought the Reeboks made her more honest, made her more real than nameless black woman hidden away in a stale drawer somewhere between the Mississippi River and Bonanza's High School. Thank you.
my closeted baby gay self really felt that one.